Fridge, I'm worried about Paul Maurice. Okay. Are, you, are you worried about Paul Maurice? In what sense? In losing his job. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, there, there's people in Winnipeg who tell me that they think that there's that there's something that might even be done already. I don't, mm. I, I don't, I don't know that to be true, mind you. But uh, you know, I think that there's a real understanding of. Look, the, the Winnipeg Jets knew coming in this year, especially when the Bufflin thing dropped on them right at the start of training camp, that this was going to be a year where they were going to really have to hold themselves above water. And I, and I think, look, their blue line is green. Their blue line is thinner than they hoped it would be. Hello Bucks had an MVP-type year to keep them into this point. He looks a bit tired, and that's why you're seeing some of these numbers go where they are. But I, I think at the beginning of the season, Maurice said, I know it looks bad, but we're this is who we are, and we're going to embrace it. And he wouldn't accept excuses. And, you know, you look at it, they're three points out of a playoff berth going into this game tonight, and one way or the other, they're going to have a, a game in hand on Vegas. I think there are a lot of people who thought they were going to be worse than this. I think they've played hard. To me, that says they still play for each other and their coach. I look at this year and I say, you cannot hang this on the coach. Now, who knows what could happen, right. but I don't see him as being the person they're going to blame for this. You mentioned Winnipeg and then you mentioned Vegas, and there's so many really interesting teams kind of fighting that line. And as we head into the deadline, I wonder how many of those teams have to do some real soul searching to figure out what they're going to be and whether or not they can sell. Have you looked at a few of those teams, and, and who do you see as the most intriguing among them? Well, I think there's a couple of teams hanging around sort of that edge right now. I think Minnesota is one of them. I think that uh, Chicago is another one of them. Uh, you know, the Rangers, they've got a home and home with Detroit. Like, the Rangers were creeping close, and they just had two tough losses, one to Columbus and one last night to the Islanders. But they've got a back-to-back -back with Detroit out of their all-star break. And if they don't get four points there, then I think you'll, you'll see them jump in with both feet too. Montreal, I think, is going to be a really interesting one. But I think there's a few teams right now, like we're right there, and they're saying we're not out yet, but we could be. And I think what they're doing is they're kind of putting their players out there. They're saying, okay, what's the value? If we need to pull the trigger, we know we can. Freeze, the one name that keeps kind of popping up is uh, Alexander Georgiev. Yep. I don't understand why. Is there any, is there, what am I missing on the Alexander Georgiev rumors out of New York? Well, I think it's tough to carry three goalies for two years. That's number yeah. one. Number two, Sid, I think if it does happen, it's going to be for something that makes them better. So I think we'd understand it. And number three, you know, they've had a couple of situations. Kravtsov, their young Russian player, first round pick a couple of years ago. He went back to Russia, he came, and now he's back in North America. Leah Anderson, first-round pick a few years ago, he's gone back to Sweden, just resumed skating, probably won't play for them again. And then I, I think they've got Shostyrkin, who's their young goalie prospect, who's in the American Hockey League. I think they're sitting there and they're saying, we've got to give them some chances to play because we don't want to risk a similar situation. So I think that's why you're seeing it. It's not easy to keep three goalies. But I, I don't think Georgiev is going unless they really get something good for him. It's an interesting one, and I feel like that's the same in Toronto. However, if I'm an opposing GM and I watch the Leafs give up six goals or more in three of their last six, I might start calling if I've got a few defensemen that I might be able to move. Is Kasperi Kapanen's name the one that comes up the most when those calls are made? Yeah, I think so, Tim. I would think it's, it's some combination of him or – or Janssen, or I'm sure Nylander comes up a bit, but he's not getting traded. Um, you know, the thing about Kapanen was I spent a lot of this week kind of looking around, mm -hmm. and the one thing that guys told me about Kapanen and the Maple Leafs is the Maple Leafs have made it very clear that, you know, he's, he's not getting traded unless it really makes them better. That's a big deal. Yeah. Like, you know, they could have traded Kapanen last year. I think they had some pretty high draft picks thrown their way. Uh, you know, before they signed him at the dra around the draft, there, were, there was some real interest in him, and I think they got some offers that they really could think about, and they didn't do it. So if they did it, didn't do it then, I don't see them doing it now unless we look at the deal and it says, wow, that makes Toronto better, 
and now I understand why Kapanen got traded. I don't see it any other way. The, the last time we had you on, we were talking about uh, stashing or if Morgan Riley was indeed out to the postseason, you could afford to bring in a guy in and around his salary yep. and, and have Riley come back for the postseason when there's no salary cap. The free agents to be on the Leafs also play into that with Tyson Berry, Cody Ceci, Jake Muzzin. I mean, if you brought in a guy with a significant salary, you could let one or two or all three of them, if you really wanted, go in free agency. Is yep. this something that Dubas is kind of looking at really seriously right now? Tim, I think all options are on the table. Um, and, you know, don't forget, we've got a season to play first. I've actually, I wrote today and I've heard that they've been asked about all three of those guys. Like, what are you doing with them at the deadline? Right. And, um, you know, I think the, the, the most likely scenario is they hold and they wait until the end of the season. I think the only way they would deal one of those guys if, is if, A, they completely collapse between now and then. Or B, Sandine or somebody just says, I, I have to play 20 minutes a night, make room for me right now. And I don't necessarily see any of those things happening. You know, the, so I think they're going to play it through and see where it ends up. I think they're trying to see if they can sign Muzzin. Uh, I, I think I, I can't prove it. Nobody's going to talk to me about it. But there's enough smoke out there that leads me to believe that the two sides are taking a run at this and seeing if they can find a common ground. Won't be easy, but I think they're trying. His injury made him more valuable to the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's what I, think they knew, I think they knew what yeah. he was, but I'll tell you this, when I heard he was going golfing, I was like, could you imagine he doesn't play the first game back? It'll be like, what was that co uh, concert that Vince Carter d danced at? Was it Usher? Oh, yeah. Nelly. Nelly. It was Nelly, okay. yes. <laughs> remember, remember that fiasco? Yes, yes, I do remember Still that. Still not fiasco. as bad as, as missing the morning of Game 7 for graduation, but whatever. What? Yeah, I remember never covering that one. I'll yeah. never forgive him for that. Never forget that Neither one. will Charles Oakley. Uh, or Antonio Davis. Or Antonio Davis. We could rhyme through a bunch of their names as well. I don't think his name is Wince Muzzin, though. Uh, correct, it isn't. <laughs> oh. no. 31 Thoughts, Sportsnet.ca, 31 Thoughts podcast with Frege and Merrick. It is uh, always good.